dear friends, colleagues, comrades, brothers and sisters, wherever you are, whenever you are, I greet you with all the greetings you like. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And I wish you all the best in your life, especially during this COVID uh, siege of all of us. Alhamdulillah, it becomes easier now in certain countries. And some of them became green, some of them are still amber, some of them are still red, but it's improving. And I believe next year we'll treat Corona or COVID-19 as flu. Like every year, I take flu injection because I'm over 65 and Corona will be from next year treated like flu, inshallah. This talk today is about uh, three hot topics. The intergenerational dialogue, the crazy individual with the vision and the future leadership. And these three things happened practically with me for nearly more than 20 years ago, over the last 20 years. First of all, let me thank my colleague Aya for her slideshow. And uh, I will explain to you the drawing later on when we go deep into the discussion. Uh, three questions. First of all, enter the generational dialogue and how can we find solution to our current problems? Second question, the vision of a man called crazy by his assistant. So the question was, how can we create the future social leadership? As I said, these were things discussed over the last 20 years or more with myself. To, understand, to, to, to answer the first question, a young man made this discussion with me. Said, how many times you try to advise people in your talks, in young people? Are they listening to you? Are they listening to most of your advices? Are they listening to some of your advices? Are they turning their back to you? Are they just being nice to you because they respect you or they think that you are like a cracked recorded message and they want to get rid of you and they're fed up of what you're saying. I told him, I don't know if most of my advice are ignored. He said, why you don't know? He said, I don't know. I told him I don't know again. Anyway, the young man told me, because, you know why? Because you, you present to them your solution. Solution that you believe in them, not their solution, the solution that they believe in it or in them or they created it. And I believe, the young man said, that your solution could be the most appropriate and uh, better one. I said, what do you mean? The young man told me, you should not present to them your special way of finding the solution or your solution. But instead, you should ask them to find solution for their problems. I told them how. They are extremely busy firefighting the aftermath of problems affecting them, their countries, their societies, and they have no time to think. Time to think. The young man said, you should not present them your special way. It's not your problem. It is their problems. I told him, but they might destroy their organization, their societies, lose their job and become jobless. Bang man told me again, let them think how to find solutions for their problems. Human beings like you and me, he told me that. 
they only believe in the solution. And they believe that the solution is the best, in spite of the fact other people's suggestion could be far more better than them. I told them, okay, what, what is this? What is it? Just tell me what's your proof, what's your evidence? He looks at me and they said, tell you something. How many times you give hundreds or thousands of advices to your children? And how many times those children who are living with you in the house, who you and your wife were the origin of their life, supporting them, caring for them, financing them, how many times they listen to your solution and how many times they ignored it. It's your own children. I said to him, you are right. But, 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 how about those people who are tens and hundreds and, and uh, thousands of miles away from us? Individuals and organizations. The societies and the organization are facing huge unprecedented challenges and they are unable to find solution for their problem, which are simple, easy, and available. And I cannot communicate with them directly. Dangman told me, it is not your problem again. And I told you, another way he was telling me, shut up. I told you many times. I told him, oh man, Oh man, oh man, do you want me to leave them alone? Is this wise? I can't believe that. Dangman told me, send them the solution in the form of questions. And let them to answer the questions. Let them create their own answers and solutions. Draw their plans and design their programs according to what? To their human financial and the intellectual resources. Don't ever send the solution as statement, send it as questions. I said, what? I said, what my job would be then? And what our jobs, those people who are calling them consultants and whatever you call them, and having experience, knowledge, and, 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 and. Dangman told me, give them advice. Guide them according to their ability and understanding. Enable them to investigate, elicitate, and extract the solution through answering your questions and queries. They will not, listen to me, listen to me everyone, as the young man told me, they will not accept from me a ready-made, solution put on a golden plate on the table for them. They will not accept the ready-made solution theory that we offer them. It's different generation, different generation. But instead, make them to feel this is your role back. You won't tell me that you are going to be jobless? No, you are not going to be jobless. I will give you a job. I said, what's my job? Let them to feel that the idea of the solution is theirs. The solution is an outcome of their belief in its different social path. They are the initiate's owner, not you. And they are the most capable people that can lead their initiatives. Number three, let them to feel that the societies believe that they are the true leaders of such initiatives and solution. So the society will follow them, the community will follow them and cooperate with them, not you. We don't want the society or the community to follow you. Number five, develop, help them develop themselves to become what? To become the leaders of the society. Number six, let them to be confident, build the confidence in themselves. 
Number seven, discover their potentials. You see, pioneering, innovative, all these potentials. Discover their potentials and exhaust their energies. Number eight, create from amongst them whom the pioneers, the innovative, the thinker, and the social guide, individuals who can guide communities and sites. This is your role. And instead of putting ready-made solution on the table, okay, follow these eight points. Did you try this? I told the young man. He said, yes, and it was very successful. He said, how? The young man used to say, or told me, I used to give them the leading questions for solutions. But quite often, they were always coming back with no answer and saying we don't have any answers for your questions. Then what do you do next? I told him. He said, my second challenge to them was, please, you people have to create a solution of your own make to your own problems. This is a challenge. Firstly, they were not be able to respond to me. No answer, it was negative. Then later on, some of them came out jubilantly, enthusiastic, excited with answers. You know, they extracted such answers from the questions that I asked them to answer before. That's what the young man told me. Let them to be feel that they own, they are the owner and the creator of their own, the solution of their own problems. No, the young man told me, because they believe that they are, these are their solutions. I ask him another question, because I travel a lot. How about the faraway individuals again? the revolutions, social change, and, and, and that man told me, we use the same methodology again, but this time through whom? Trusted colleague on themselves. Not you, not you. Please try this and you're not going to lose anything. Please trust me. I said, thank you. This was my first question and my first answer and the whole discussion, the intergenerational dialogue. The second question is how can you, how can you, how you dare you call your boss crazy man? Ah, ah, ah. This is what happened about six or seven years or more ago. We were sitting down in a room discussing when we actually in the Hematian forum. And I always create stupid ideas, stupid questions, sometimes about them backward, forward, upside down, bottom up, whatever you call it. Then I started the discussion by saying, what do you think of someone who is living in a room having no furniture, no look to close the door, broken windows, no electricity, no sink, no toilet seat, no shower, barefooted and wearing bad patchy pajama. And this individual looked from the broken window to the lights or to the rays of the sun shining. You know what he said? How can I, I, I change the miserable solution of this world? I believe we can do it. I believe I can do it. It's not difficult. And soon. Inshallah. Then he looked at everyone in the room, asking for an answer. Unfortunately, the first one next to him was his assistant, who joined recently. Her name was Asma, or is Asma. And he told him, what's your answer? She swiftly said that he is crazy. Once she said that, the room pursed up in laughing, loudly. 
And she was shocked, telling them, what's wrong with you people? Am I saying funny? What I'm saying is funny? Why are you laughing? One of the colleagues, his name was Tariq, he told her, you know who is the crazy man? And he pointed his finger at me. She was a little bit shameful. Sorry, I apologize. I said, Why should I apologize? Don't feel sorry. Don't be apologetic. Your answer was right. Crazy man. This is a drawing which I drew last week to explain uh, the situation or to explain the, 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 the content of the lecture. And so this young people making dialogue from different parts of the world could be from one generation, another generation, or free inter intragenerational. Could be intergenerational, or could be intragenerational. Intragenerational between the same generation. Has to be there. And the one in black hair is a crazy, a visionary individual. And these two young men should be the future leaders, inshallah. Uh, we're still talking about the craziness of the charismatic, stupid leaders. 2013 is another true incident happened to us while we were in humanitarian forum. We faced a very severe financial, acute, very acute financial situation. We nearly going to go to close down the organization. And the board of trustees were meeting on a day, on a weekly basis. Then, alhamdulillah, we managed to raise some funds from here and there to take a deep breath and to trim the number of employees. By October of this was actually summer, maybe April, May uh, 2013. By October uh, 2013, I was invited to attend a high-level humanitarian meeting in Istanbul, organized by the Foreign Office of the United Kingdom, as well as UN Notch. And I was speaking there. After I finished my intervention, a young lady came and sat down next to me. And she told me, are you Mr. So-and-so? I said, yes, I am. I said, I'm happy to meet you. I said, I'm, I'm happy too. She originally is from Egypt, and she looks like myself with the same blood. And she told me about a new and great initiative or opportunity made by the General Secretary General of the United Nations at the General Assembly in September of the same year, that they are having to organize the first ever World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul on May 2016. And they are, the decision just made me made last month. I said, you are most welcome to attend our conference in Amman, Jordan, in January 2014, and you invite your boss with you. I looked at it as a kiss of life for humanitarian forum. We were drowning, nearly dead, to be buried. And now uh, the lady from UN Ocha gave me this case of life. By January 2014, we organized the conference in Amman under the auspices of His Royal Highness Prince uh, Hassan ibn Talal, the uncle of the current king and the brother of the late King Hussein, Rahmatullah Ali. It was a very successful conference. Very well attended, as, as mentioned here in this slide. Uh, why very successful? Because of the uh, sponsorship or the, actually the custodianship of His Royal Highness, Prince Hassan. Second, the attendance also of Prince uh, Turkey, uh, Ibn Talal, Ibn Abdelaziz Al Saud from Saudi Arabia. Thirdly, the name and the credibility of the humanitarian forum. Fourthly, the diversity and the, of distinguished uh, humanitarian and development organizations. So it's very, very successful, extremely successful. So from being buried alive, 2013, in May, June, to championing a new initiative, inshallah. So this was the first entry to the World Humanitarian Summit of 2016 in January 2014. Then when we came back to UK, 
I was talking to my colleague, his name Tariq, the same one who was telling uh, Asma in my last intervention about uh, the, the crazy man is myself. Told them, Tariq, he said, yes. I said, we need to prepare some workshops among the Arab and the Islamic humanitarian organization to convince them to attend. I said, yes, very good idea. I told them, how many workshops you think we need to organize? I said, five, 10. Then I said, how many uh, countries, Muslim countries registered in the organization of OIC? I said, over 50. I said, Doc, I said, what? But where are you going to get the fund from? I said, don't worry about the fund. I said, what are you thinking about? I said, let me. Five, 10 workshops, 50 plus countries. Tariq, he said, what? I told him we need to organize 50 preparatory workshops. I said, what? Then he said, Doc, sorry, I'm busy. I need to go to do my work. Yeah, and he looked at me, the same miserable look as that I received from Asma a few years ago. Crazy man. You know what happened between January 2014 to December 2015? We organized, alhamdulillah, Forum, 39 workshops in 36 countries in five continents and 78% of our target, which was 50 workshops. In 72% in 72 of the countries that we wanted to visit in five continents. When I met with the Egyptian ambassador in Geneva in I think July or August 2015, I was explaining this to him. And he's, he's a brain, and he knows what he's talking about. But the Geneva ambassador is, we look at humanitarian development work. The Bern ambassador in, in Switzerland is a political one. Said, how on earth you organize 39 workshops or 38 or 37 at the time in about uh, 36 countries in less than one and a half years? How did you get to transfer the money from A to B to C to D? I said, it was a partnership agreement between us as humanitarian forum, United, United Nations Office for Humanitarian Coordination, and the local organization. The local organization to organize the workshop, the meeting place, invite the organizations. We invite with us the UN OCHA. I said about transferring the money. I said, there's no money transfer because there's always everything is organized locally. If I follow your philosophy of transferring money, we could not have organized even five or seven workshops because of the restriction of money movement from third world countries to developed countries. A great idea. This was opportunity taken. The third question was a constant one, constant one. Many times, many times, many times. But last time, it was a week or more ago, raised to me by one of my colleagues, a young man called Islam. He told me during your work in your organization, how, how did you create leadership? I said, there's two stages of creating leadership. In my own life, the first stage, stage was ad hoc, spontaneously ad hoc, no proper planning, programs, not professional, and general, but was generally successful. Why? Because during this stage, the trainees were trained directly by the founders of the organization. They can learn from them, the profession, through their daily dealing with them, the practical experiences, understand the philosophical ideology of their vision and understand the first uh, philosophical ideology of their vision. But they will also face challenges. This is a good side of it. But the, what is the challenges, as Lam said? Number one, if you learn from a charismatic, visionary, dedicated, hardworking leader who 
is having strong character and their expectation, you will suffer from that. Number two, there was no program. Today is up, tomorrow is down. Today is up. I remember one of my colleagues working now for the United Nations in Sudan. You know what he used to say? Dr. Ilbanna, we used to trust you. We don't know where you're going to go, but we used to go behind you. No programs, no parameters, no principles to follow. This is the first one. The third one is the hard working and sacrifices. If you, if you work with the founder who's going to mentor you, you have to work harder than him. Number four, you should be scared for your job because you might give him a bad or wrong impression. This is the challenge. This is the stage one. It was done uh, from 1984 to 2004. 2004, me and one of my colleagues in Los Angeles airport were discussing the idea of future leaders. And because we fed up of getting somebody ex government organization, I'm not going to mention the name of the, gov the, the organization. They're just bureaucrat, waste of time. I have been working in this department for 10 years. So what? Anyway, in our discussion in Los Angeles airport, it's based on five points we have to do. But actually, we could not be able to do this actually structured program because this again, who is going to manage it in 2004 and 2005. But what are the first, the five parameters or the five principles? First of all, it has to be a part of it to be academic program for a master's degree to be given to the trainees. Second, it has to have an on uh, hands-on training in office, like finance, accounting, programs, media, fundraising, and others. Third, have to have a field office, uh, field training, where you go and see the real program, be with the people. Fourthly, you have to have a mentor and coaching, mentoring and coaching by individuals who have like of the profession. Like if 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 somebody like Maulana Eid is still alive, we'll, we'll get him. If somebody like Muhammad Yunus uh, accept, we'll get him. If somebody like Dr. Abdurrahman Smith is still alive, we'll get him. And others with this caliber to give the profession itself. Number five, to get some people to talk about the value of the sector. The value, of, and this should be actually, uh, the, the, the program from two to four should be run parallel with the academic degree in two years to three years. This was the answer for how to make future leadership. So my message to you, young people, is we well, talking about the three questions to answer them. The first question is talking about how can we create dialogue in different aspects of life, in our family, school, extended family, government institution and organization, between political parties, between societies, civil society, civil society organization, tribes, clans, have to create dialogues, no matter what. It's this kind of top bottom approach, the military uh, down top up, uh, 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 top, to, top to bottom approach is wrong. It's wrong, it's wrong. You cannot keep, you cannot order people, you have to, to, to make a dialogue with people. Because dialogue is, this is actually my definition of dialogue. Dialogue is the first message of nurturing children, upbringing generations, and treating family problems. It's the first method of community building, establishing renaissance and creating civilization. It's the first method of learning, knowledge transfer, and understanding the different solution for, com for the complicated social problems. It's the first method of treating radicalism extremism and terrorism is the first message of discovering social illnesses, finding effective solutions for such illnesses and informing the communities about the root causes, then protecting the community from such devastating impact of such problems. The first message of peace building, communities stabilities and sustainable prosperity. The first message for finding jobs, creating new jobs, job opportunity, and fighting unemployment, 
the first message of working, being productive and quality improvement, having quality improvement. The first message for fighting corruption, ignorance, illnesses, poverty and deprivation. The first message of building strategies, making plans and achieving objectives. And the first but not the last method of gaining confidence, patriotism, and protecting the social constants, such as manners, values, morality, faith, and religion. Dialogue means equality. Don't come and tell me I am the lead. No, equality. And competitiveness between the interlocutors. No inferiority and superiority. No authoritarianism and dependency. No anecdotal eloquence and weak verbal explanation. No, give the people the chance. There is no difference between the interlocutors. They are the same, have the same right. We are equal before Allah, the Creator, as well as before our uh, community. To move to the second question, young people, just talking about how to utilize any opportunity and change this opportunity into a great and effective social services, which has happened in the World Humanitarian Summit 2016. It's complicated, but to, to, to do that, you have to have this requirement in your society first. What do you need? To have in your society before you change opportunity into uh, great uh, effective social services. I am talking because I've been living in the West for the last nearly 40 plus years. Okay. There are more people more intelligent than myself living in different parts of the world over the same period. I have higher qualification but they don't have the seven or eight points that I'm going to mention to you today in this society. Number one, number one, most importantly, and this is crucial, if it's not there, nothing will happen. The available civil liberty state, so no, the available civil liberty space provided to each individual. Is there any freedom for the man or the woman to speak? Number one. Number two, the stability, sustainability, and strength and transparency of whom? Of the civil political system, not military political system, not security political system, not autocratic political system. A dictatorship, repressive. These three systems become repressive and dictatorship. The stability and sustainability and the strength and transparency of the civil political system inside your country. It's number two. Number three, the strength and independence of the civil society sector and organization. Number four, the presence of a strong, empowered, able, and independent state institution to observe the government behavior, not to be governed by the government officers, such as president or prime minister. They are government officers. Number five, encouraging the young people initiatives and sponsoring them by government partners, private sectors, and civil society organizations. Number six, look at this in your country first. Considering the citizen, yourself and myself, status the summit, the summit, the peak of the society, of the state, of the government and the country. And all officials working inside the country from the president, the prime minister, the minister and others are employees, civil servant employees to serve such individual citizen. Number seven, citizens should feel safe and secure in their society, tranquil and harmonious in their societies, friendly 
friendly, should feel friendliness and benevolence towards what? Huh? Towards all social components and state institutions in the site, not to be scared of the security, the intelligence, not to be secured of people come and kidnap them or knock their houses in the middle of the night and take their father or mother or the daughter away from them. It's number seven. Number eight, and this only happened in military state, military government state, security government state, and autocratic states, repressive and dictatorship. Encouraging education and learning. Studying and scientific research, experimenting and applying, amendment and discretion, overpowering and coexistence. These eight points, if you want to change any opportunity into effective, impactful social service, you have to look at these eight points in your society or in your country. Thought, pioneering, invention, innovation, and being ahead of other nations and civilization will never happen until we provide societies with the above social constants, the eight points. There is no one amongst us is a crazy maniac or a buried friend of a genie. There's no genie with a magic touch. The third question was about how to make future leaders. This is the most important forward-looking and long-term axis to build nations and organizations' future. The first and second questions are the essential foundation for building the different frames of the third. I personally believe strongly that every one of us is gifted. Every citizen is gifted. Like the Singaporean treating the children. Every citizen is gifted and having many potentials that we have to discover such potentials for him or her. We have to discover, develop these potentials, refine their gifts and their pioneering ability and then try to empower them who discover, develop, and refine them. They are gifted people by God. Each, each citizen. There is no disabled person amongst us. The disabled people are those ones who are disabling themselves. There is no poor person amongst us. The poor people are those ones who are impoverishing themselves. Uh, impoverishing themselves. There is no ignorant person amongst us. The ignorant people are those ones who are making themselves ignorant. There is no unemployed person amongst us. The unemployed person or people are those who, those ones who are disturbing their employability. There is no weak person amongst us. The weak people are those ones who are weakening themselves. There is no humiliated person amongst us. The humiliated people are those ones who are humiliating themselves. There is no despicable persons amongst us. The despicable people are those ones who make themselves despicable. There's no displeavers amongst us. The displeavers are those ones who follow their desires, not the path of Allah. You can make it happen. It's easy to happen, but you have to be constant focusing and show perseverance. Why all this, the young people said? Because human beings are the most magnificent and complicated creatures created by Allah to fulfill their duties before humanity as their guardians before Allah. And at the meantime, he created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all other creations to serve them and support them, him and her. Young people, you are this human being. 
You are this human being, the magnificent creation, and the most important. You are the loving worshiper, worshiping leader. You are the honest, learned, hard worker. You are the preparing, constructive explorer. You are the caring, mature caller. You are. Believe in yourself. Young people. You are this human being. You are the honored, formed, and proportioned. You are the ones whom Allah made the angels to prostrate before you, male and female. Made from amongst you, messengers, prophets, and reformers, scholars, scientists, Jews, and the guided wise people. You are those people. You are the religion banners holders. You are the culture creators from amongst the followers of the prophet or the prophets. Young people, you are who other countries and the institution are fighting one another over you. You know why? Some of them want to spoil you and make you misguided. Others want to guide you to become righteous. Third wants you to distract you and make you go astray. But we want you to become leaders and pioneers, role models and the ascetic, the hope for worshippers, a God-given gift for others. When you face difficulties, you face difficulties how? And kneel down for him without appointments. It's you. Whenever you face difficulty, you don't have any permission from Allah to kneel down for him. Just kneel down without any appointment. If you want to start the industry of making the future leaders, please let it start with this intergenerational dialogue. Intergenerational dialogue. And I will always, inshallah, be with you if you require my services. Thank you for listening to me today. And next week, we'll have another uh, episode, inshallah. And uh, see you next week in another episode about uh, corporate social responsibility, inshallah. Uh, prepared by one of the young people like yourself, even younger than all of you. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.